Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this will be episode number four of the Let's Talk Things Over series. And today I want to take you guys on a um, review tour, basically, of all the space STFs. And then I want to talk to you about um, what makes a good group composition and how to actually uh, kill the mission effectively. Like, how do you do it quickly? Because that always is... Um, what we are aiming for. Like, I know that uh, this discussion is going on on the forums and in the chat all the time uh, when people say, oh, you only pet your meters and it's all number pushing. And I uh, just today uh, read about uh, someone posting how um, Pied Will is only, um, you know, just AOE damage and it doesn't really benefit you. Um, so last time on uh, Episode number three, part three, we saw the ISE run, which took just about two minutes with a um, 52k DPS from um, Scimitar. Um, today, I want to do the ISE a few times more, uh, once with Federation beams, once with cannons, and then uh, just to point out the gameplay mechanics basically involved with the different styles of ships, and then uh, complete on the, final, the other STFs missions. Um, Outside of that, um, I probably don't need to talk about the uh, Undine missions. We might do that in the future, but for today, I kind of want to uh, keep it limited to the Borg STFs. And after that, um, I will try to talk about the group composition, even though we will probably see that in between as well. Um, okay. So let's get started with um, infected space. As I said last time, we saw it with the um, uh, scimitar. That was basically the Romulan point of view. Uh, let's start with the with an average Federation um, uh, fired will build. Basically, uh, this is now what it would look like if you uh, just play a Federation tune. You don't get the um, cloaking thing going. You don't need to cloak on the, the first cube. Um, basically, what you need to look out for is um, on this video now. This is basically the um, old standard strategy. Uh, as you can see right now, we use the um, ox to bat layout of the ship. Down here, we have the two ox to bats. Um, you will almost always uh, see that on DPS Federation builds, um, on cruisers, I mean, because you just don't have enough um, attack slots to actually get multiple attack patterns and multiple fired wills along with all the um, tag teams. Um, we run the um, hazard emitters and the tractor beam repulsors. And you need to keep in mind that once we use aux to bat, we will actually dump all our aux power. And therefore, you shouldn't use your uh, hazard emitters to, uh, to heal your haul up while you're on low aux power. Uh, however, even on low aux, your hazard emitters will still cleanse you of a fire debuff. Okay? So, um, as always, on the first cube, you don't want to go too wild. Don't use your attack plan alpha. Don't use your fleet unless you have uh, several people uh, staggering them. So you use one after another. Um, it just usually isn't worth it to... Um, let me actually bring up the page. Um, it's usually not worth it to use your major cooldowns when you know you will in just about two or three seconds be flying only and there will be no enemies within range or you could only shoot the gate, uh, which you could do. It will produce numbers, but we don't really care about the numbers themselves. We want to be uh, the guys that kill the enemies. You know, they, they should be dead after you are through with them. Okay, so let's see here. We use our uh, attack column beta. We use the uh, beam fired wall. You cannot see here. We have uh, also have the emergency portal weapons up, just uh, broadsided now. So we hit the uh, upper sphere over here with our rear arrays, the cube with our rear arrays. So we actually full broadside them. Um, okay, let's just give it a sec to take them all out as we uh, take some fire. Uh, you can see now the attack team is going down three seconds into the uh, this now. Um, so we distribute all our shields to the facing from where we are attacked. Um, all the enemies are already dead. So we now evasive over, use the ox to bed to get our attack plan beta and fight will back. Now all cooldowns are being used. We see the uh, attack plan alpha, the fleet and the direct energy modulation going down. 
uh, targeting the nanite generator, keep always in mind that um, fire will always hits your main target and spreads randomly to a secondary. Uh, so in this situation, we can hit this target, we can hit the target in the back. The guy on the left might be uh, in line of sight issues with the big thing in the middle. We have the fourth uh, generator right behind us and we have the cube up top. So we have um, a total of six targets right now, out of which only one does not actually take damage. So as we, as I said, you will always hit your main target. So um, that leaves five targets and one of them will randomly be hit, which is a 20% loss to your uh, additional 140%, which you gain from uh, fire at will. So yeah, okay. Um, we actually move out of range of the gate in the middle. Now use the tractor beam repulsors in the middle. So uh, we actually hit all the three targets we can. Um, as you can see, it hits the upper cube, the uh, generator in the back. We target the highest generator over there. Once that one is done, everyone focus fires the thing in the middle, and as you can see, it just gets instantly obliterated. Uh, we backtrack now to the middle of the map, uh, use our abilities over again to AoE the spheres. Um, I have used my GDF here from the uh, wall fire from, from the plasma fire. And now we kill those uh, spheres. At this point, I kind of panic a little. Like, um, I have low shields, and one torpedo critting me could take me possibly out. Uh, therefore, I decide to go for the uh, Romulan cloak now, which I don't really want to do. But I uh, just feel like if I stay in range of the gate for too long, it might actually take me out. So uh, I decide to go the safer route. Uh, as you can see now, the next thing coming up will be the uh, evasive maneuvers already queued up as the next ability. So there's one of the torpedo hits taking me down to 25. Um, we are burning a little, but that is not too bad. Um, all the other coolants you are being used once more. Uh, targeting the cube right now, just, you know, I'm a little afraid as I'm, my shields are kind of low. But that's okay, we have enough damage to actually take it all out pretty quickly. Uh, targeting the generators in the back, oxidating all our cooldowns, and just killing the thing in the middle. Uh, engineering team to heal the hole a little. We already have the GDF, so we don't need to care about that anymore. Brace for impact in case some torpedoes decide to take us out. The um, tractor beam repulsors to make sure that the spheres take a little more kinetic damage and also to keep them a little at range from us. Tech on Alpha, just mark, uh, parking in the middle between the gate and the cube here. Um, and basically all the coolants going down. There's nothing too special to this. Um, it's just that, you know, you need to use your abilities properly when your weapons are already shooting or uh, are on cooldown. Like right now, as you can see, this uh, vertical bar, it's a little staggered for all the weapons. Um, they're currently all shooting, okay? So um, this now, when it makes the circle-ish thing, that is when the weapon is actually on cooldown. And once the cooldown is finished, it will try to refresh its uh, firing uh, circle, basically cycle I mean so uh, when it is highlighted like this the game or the auto fire tries to shoot it off once more and at that point if you now use an ability you will go into global cooldown and therefore can shoot your weapons so this is now the moment where you are not allowed basically to use an ability unless you decide that it's okay to uh, screw over your firing cycle uh, but you really don't want to do that okay uh, if you do it, you have to press auto firing or shoot all weapons again. And um, basically, you don't really want to do this. You want to make it shoot like this, uh, like the last weapon shoot now. And now you uh, basically can use all your abilities. Like you know, you have one or two seconds, so you can easily use one or two abilities in between. And then the mission is already finished. As you see, we uh, finished with a beautiful 41k DPS finished the infected space in about 2 minutes 17 seconds combat time. It's a little uh, more on the um, optional timer because that only starts when the first cube is dead. Okay? So uh, that's basically how you would do the normal run. Like you uh, have everyone flying to the, the center cube, AOE it down, don't use too much of your cooldowns, uh, try to get a GDF if you can. 
um, you can't always get it on Federation side. You cannot cloak on the cube. So you basically have to hope for you know good RNG, make it uh, that it at attacks you. Um, well, or just fly into the cube and fly into the next cube, and that them popping that could also get you down low enough. Uh, then just fly over, take all the spheres, and at this point I kind of want to stress that with the new difficulty, when everything has five to six times more HP, you gotta take it easy on them. Like you gotta do it slowly, okay? Uh, really, kind of wait for the spheres to come over and actually kill them all and make sure they are dead because they have ridiculous health, uh, which actually increases the viability of cannons again because they are kind of good at aoeing things down um, if it's more than two targets. Uh, then you fly over, do the same thing on the other side, and fly to the middle and kill everything. Um, if you have trouble staying alive, don't have too much problems with the um, timer in the end. Um, the classic strategy when we did this a year ago was to fly to the back side of the gateway, uh, so we wouldn't actually aggro the tag cube and could take it out without uh, having to sustain the fire from both. I mean, you can clearly see that it's not a problem anymore, but it might be if you... Um, you know, don't have as much damage or uh, don't have as much survivability. Okay, so let's actually uh, do a couple more ISE runs. This one now is the um, infected with cannons on the uh, Tempest class ship. Uh, someone asked me to show how cannons would look like. This is now the uh, known scenario layout. So uh, I screwed a little up on um, setting up before it was today's first run. I don't have the um, common lock reader running. Uh, someone will post the final damage at the end of, though, so uh, we are good on that. Um, as you see, attack pattern Omega. I don't have a second attack pattern on this uh, build right now. I usually would if I had switched out my bridge officer, but um, Okay, that's just how it is right now. Uh, we basically use um, the cannon scatter volley as we only have that ability. Like I, I don't have a cannon rapid fire, uh, even though it might be five percent more single target damage. I would clearly lose on the AOE side so much that I could never pick that up. Okay, uh, emergency pod weapons is also being used, and now we uh, fly to the cube. And you have to keep in mind that damage of cannons really um, diminishes the further you are away from your target. So if you are at 2k, um, you are basically dealing almost um, optimal damage. You lose, however, very, very much if you stay further away. Like 10k will uh, basically reduce your damage by 8%. That's just ridiculous. So make sure that with cannons, you always get into close range. Um, we now have our GDF, Alpha, and Tag Fleet running once more. I even... Uh, Forgot about one of no, we don't we don't actually have that ability in this layout right now. Okay, so we again focus fire at the uh, nanite generators to kill them uh, because otherwise we wouldn't damage the thing in the middle. Okay, as you can see, the thing in the back died already, and we now focus fire the uh, simulator as it is dead already. We turn around, uh, target the spheres, and we still have every buff in the game basically. We have GDF, we have Alpha, Omega. Uh, fleet even a couple of seconds. So we gravity well everything as it gets sensor scanned, which is another good uh, debuff on resistances. And we hit the Nadian bomb into them right now, which produces these uh, awesome 100k numbers, <laughs> which is a little a joke. But anyways, okay, so now we shoot a, the gate a little because we can't uh, evasive over, still on cooldown. Uh, now we target the nanite generator. Uh, obviously don't need to shoot the gate, it doesn't do anything. Um, why we basically do it is uh, to keep the um, Plasmonic Leech console up and to get us the um, Omega weapon amplification proc of the assimilated, or whatever it's called, the kinetic cutting beam and the um, uh, assimilated console. They give you a short proc, uh, which you can see here. It lasts for only three seconds, but it reduces your uh, energy drain on weapons drastically. Like when you shoot, you almost don't lose any energy, even the full cycle takes you down to like 121 or something. So uh, that's why we try to get that buff. As you can see, now proc once more. Uh, we kind of fly over a little earlier here. Uh, we do have enough damage to uh, take them all out. Uh, just can scatter volley into them. Gravity weld them again. 
to act uh, to just maximize our AOE potential on um, our run here, so everything dies quickly, uh, flying over through the gateway when we are pretty sure that everything will die in time. Uh, now attack pattern omega. Okay, uh, the gate is kind of low. We kind of want everything to die at the same time. Um, therefore, I just uh, move over to the next target and actually mark uh, the attack cube early. I didn't stay long enough for the um, gate to die, but I kind of know that with all the fight will going on, uh, the gate will obviously die in time. So that's basically how you do the uh, cannon uh, thing. So now I ask for someone to uh, post the lock. First run, forgot to parse, but someone will help us out. Which gives me a beautiful water break. Okay, so this is the um, comma lock for the run. Um, it's not actually true. Like uh, it says here that we did 38.3. Um, he, however, used the active comment time. So in truth, this was like 34.7 or so. But it's okay, you know. Um, basically, it's enough. It's, and you have to understand that with the upcoming change to spheres being so much more durable that our um, damage will actually on cannons become better because our major damage component here comes from uh, AOEing those spheres down that will just get easier. Um, okay, so that's that. Um, do you guys want to see one more? Let's do another real. A quick one. I, I don't actually know how quick it is. Um, this is now on the um, uh, Defiant class ship. As you can see, we have only cannons, no unique consoles, unless you want to use the uh, cloaking device, which I really don't uh, suggest anyone to do. Uh, so this is now only cannons. Got volley basically um, doing its job. Uh, it's not a particularly good run, but it's good enough to show you guys basically. Um, what you are aiming for. I'm pretty sure that you could get this build to um, do more than 30k, um, but we don't actually need to. You know, even with the upcoming changes, um, 15k is probably what you will need for an infected space advanced. So, uh, yeah, 25 is more than enough on this part. Um, as you can see now, all the buffs going down when we head over to where we actually have someone to shoot. Killing the generator, killing the other generator. That's just always the same. I mean, if you see these uh, runs so quickly, one after another, you basically get that it's all the uh, same guiding principle. Like, you do fly into the middle, kill it, don't use too much cooldowns, fly to the right, uh, left, use all your shit basically if you want to. If you have a GDF, that's even better. Um, now, I mistargeted for some reason the uh, gateway, but we actually wanted to shoot the nanite spheres. So uh, we TBR them a little away, so we keep them, them actually on our front lock. Uh, just scatter volley them. Once they are dead, evasive's going down now. Uh, heading over to target the next generator, as you can see. Uh, I think I didn't, yeah, did not yet get my GDF, so that's pretty much a shitty run right there, uh, because the buff lasts for so long and we didn't get it yet. Um, so I'm trying to aggro the cube to actually give me that GDF. Here we go, it's uh, explosion taking me down to 46. I'm kind of hoping for uh, the explosion to take me down, but then I get a little nervous and use it too early. Uh, a little mistiming there, could have had a 30% uh, one when the cube exploded, but that's okay. Um, as you can see, the thing is dying. Uh, we are moving to the center, targeting the, the spheres, uh, using all our buffs basically once more. Now, you have to understand that um, to maximize your damage, you always have these spikes of ultra high damage when you use all your debuffs, uh, all your buffs, and all your debuffs on the enemy, like attack pattern beta. Um, so, a very good run usually takes one minute. That's like the perfect timing because then you benefit the whole time from your uh, GDF, like one minute, 10 seconds, uh, 10 seconds for the first cube to pop to uh, give you that GDF, and then one more minute. Uh, then you can use all of your buffs and have the optimal uptime on things. Okay, so that's it for infected once more. Uh, as you can see, 25 something. With cannons, it's kind of okay. You can definitely live with that. 
Um, so if you have a one minute, 10 second fight, you have the almost maximum uptime of um, your boss. If you, for example, uh, look at a like two minutes, 40 seconds window or two minute window, okay? A two minute window is also kind of good because um, you use your buffs uh, quite early, wait for the cooldown and then use them again and then exactly when they when the second set of uh, cooldowns ends, your enemy should be dead. That way you have two spikes and only one downtime. If you have a uh, fight that takes you almost to the second or almost to the third attack panel alpha, you basically uh, lose on all those um, uh, phases of low damage basically and therefore your damage takes down which can be kind of okay but uh, the way we build our ships basically requires you to have a fast one fast run like we don't build the ship to be super durable so um, we try to actually knock down to a level where uh, we can just obliterate things quick enough to get our optimal uptimes of things okay so that's it for ISE uh, you don't have to watch out for too much. You basically just go in there, slaughter uh, the thing in the middle, fly to the left, kill the smaller ones on the bottom. Um, with the upcoming change, you might want to target the um, cube a little more. Then um, you kill the thing in the middle when all the smaller ones at the sides are dead. Once you kill the first one, the spheres in the middle spawn and try to fly over to heal the uh, assimilator thing. And if that happens, you will actually lose the optional, which uh, on advanced or elite difficulty will make you fail the mission. Um, so you have to do it kind of quickly, but that's not too much of an issue. Uh, then you fly over to the right, do the same thing, and then kill uh, the other. You don't attack the gate because the gate actually gets healed by the uh, big things on the sides. Um, the generators are the small ones, the assimilators or whatever they're called, um, they heal the gate. So there have been cases where it has been bugged, where those don't actually heal the gate. You could just fly into the middle and kill the gate, uh, but you still need to kill all the bark to um, get the mission done. Okay, so Cure Space Elite, that is uh, the next one I want to look at with you guys. Um, which ship should we start with? Let's actually do the uh, Romulan first, like this is the um, scimitar. Uh, when we walk into the mission, we have a cube to the right, a cube in the middle, and a cube to the left that we currently don't really see. Uh, we have the IKS Kang in the middle, and these cubes now um, spawn little enemies that try to fly to the middle and kill the Kang. If that happens, uh, you lose the mission. There are like three optionals on the new difficulty. Um, if it drops below 75%, you lose the first. If, you, if it drops below 50%, you lose the second. If it drops below 25%, you lose the last one. And I think that's also the fail on the mission. Might be that they have to destroy it, but it really shouldn't happen. Um, you can control the small ones. Um, you can TBR them. You can grapple on them. They have quite hefty HP on the test server right now. Uh, on the live servers, they are kind of a joke. So um, this is now a dual beam bank layout with aux to bad. Uh, everyone will hate on you if you try to do this. Uh, I still wanted to show you basically what the potential might be. Uh, we cloak up, now use all our cooldowns in order, so attack, attack team, um, emergency power to weapons, attack pan and omega, fire at will, um, attack plan alpha, the aux to bad to reduce cooldowns and the direct energy modulation just before we decloak because that is our shortest cooldown. Uh, hitting them with the isometric charge, and we don't see really much on this screen now. Okay, uh, so there are three lower nanite probes, uh, three upper nanite probes, and the uh, cube on the top. Um, the nanite probes basically do the same thing as an ISE, they heal the uh, other bark they are connected to. So the lower ones heal the upper ones, and the upper ones heal the cube. Uh, you basically want to make sure that you have one of the lower ones targeted if you fire at will. As you can see, everything just gets burned instantly. Um, you always deal your major damaging part basically to your main target. Therefore, even if you lose some of your damage due to the, hitting the upper ones, 
um, it's kind of okay, you know. The stuff just dies so quickly that it's the lost damage is less than what you could do if you wouldn't use I at will. That's just because the stability is so good. Okay, uh, so we cloak just under the first cube, get our uh, GDF, which is quite good. So you can see the uh, raptors now spawn when we destroy the first cube. That's basically an extra wave. If you kill one cube, if we destroy the second, a wave of Magmars will spawn. Uh, we just take them all out, use our healing abilities here, um, and then we just make sure to target always the right uh, enemies. Okay, that's a little awkward here. We have the cube targeted, that is not optimal. Um, I guess that's because he had me targeted and somehow tried to retaliate to the attack and target. Uh, that's okay though, so we kill him. As you can see, I mean, this is just a matter of seconds, like one minute into the fight. Uh, cloaking up once more using the evasives, uh, also about our cooldowns. Then the wave of Borg uh, Nekvars shows up and we basically AoE them down, um, targeting the probes now. Um, you have usually someone um, to watch out for the Kang, so basically taking out the things that spawn from the left and from the middle cube, and uh, all the others kill the right one, then kill the middle one, then to kill the left one. Uh, on the time record runs, we try to minimize on the flying time. Uh, that will be the next one I want to show you. Uh, so you do the 2-1-2 uh, two, split, which basically means that one person flies to the left, uh, two persons fly to the left, one guy flies to the center, and two fly to the right. Uh, that way you try to kill everything at once or try to converge on the uh, center cube. So after just about 1 minute 51 seconds on combat time, we are finished with the uh, initial stage, which is basically the only one there is, because um, just how easy the boss is. I mean, they get increased by quite a fair amount, but they still don't really resemble a boss, so um, found my mark on him, the uh, directed energy modulation, and then we just kill him. I mean, as you can see, he just burns right through all his hull and shields. So that is done in a matter of seconds, so long as time takes us for him to spawn. Okay, that's it. Um, cure space. Uh, remember, you have usually to allocate someone to kill uh, the small spawning ships from middle and left. Everyone else flies to um, the right one, takes it out, to flies to the middle one, takes it out, flies to the left one, takes it out. The strategy is referred to as the RML. Right, middle, left, just because that is the uh, killing order. Um, okay, so let's actually bring up the uh, two one two split, which I will just pull off uh, one of the recordings of the stream. Uh, this is now a ten months only f uh, old file, uh, just to basically show quickly uh, what it looks like. Okay. This is so old that even I used back in the day ACT. So um, we just do the split run now. We uh, get out our pads first. If you want to rewatch the file um, with sound, you can do that later on the stream, as I said. So now we do uh, two left, one in the middle, two to the right, and we just um, try to kill the nanite probes down below real quick. The uh, Word of Praise just die to fire at will. We don't actually care if they die. It's okay if they do, but they don't really need to, because they couldn't possibly get into range of Kang before uh, we take everything out, you know. Um, so we now do the upper part here. As you can see right now, so we have three out of four good targets. They are all dead, so we now go for the cube. Uh, this is, as I said, 10 months old, so all bad was kind of thing back in the day. Uh, we don't usually use that anymore um, just to showcase you that it actually works and okay that's almost it. The last cube about to fall over 20% and that's it. Okay so that is what we do on the 2-1-2 uh, split. However this is for real high DPS only basically. If you 
really have to concern yourself with the five or seven second evasive over, um, then you can do this. If you do fight longer on the actual cubes, it's not worth it. Do we have drop frames? Hmm. Okay, anyways. Okay, so let's do this once more with cannons. This has been the uh, most prominent cannon run uh, for a very long time. Uh, we once more use the uh, Easy Tempest class ship with the beautiful console uh, that kills everything. As you can see here, uh, it's been called out as RML, no defense, basically meaning that we don't allocate someone to actually take out all smaller ships. Uh, this now, as you can see, is my actual uh, layout for the ship. Uh, no gravity while I switched out the Lieutenant Commander Universal from my uh, no win layout to be the um, uh, tech guy the second. So we use our all our be uh, buffs. We use the emergency portal weapons, attack pattern Omega, attack pattern Alpha, fleet, um, direct energy modulation, then hit the lower pro. Um, has all AOE abilities in this game, it has a certain limitation. Fire will hits only two targets. Cannon scatter molly only hits three. So that is why it takes out both of them. And now let's look at these numbers. We by accident hit the upper ones, but we can't really change that. Okay. Uh, I have the lower one targeted, and it might actually at some point target the another one, but for some reason it doesn't. So uh, targeting this back one here now uh, gives us the lower one here and the um, upper one, which we can actually damage. So uh, there's no real way to actually only target the ones you want, uh, just because this is all a damage increase. Like um, if we hadn't used cannon scatter volley, we would have lost even on the second thing that we actually wanted to damage. You know, uh, you see how those bird of praise fly over there. Um, we basically decide to ignore them because we don't need to kill them. DBR and those little back, so we don't get into trouble with them. Uh, actually, we don't. Well, that's not yet available, so we uh, just kill the raptors, shooting them. Uh, the bird of prey do deal only very little damage. Second, uh, cooldown wave attack on Omega can scatter volley. Uh, this time, hitting the lower one in the front, upper one over there as well. Um, okay, we target this one, and this mission basically requires you just to focus fire on uh, the lower ones, the middle ones, and then the cube. Um, if you prefer to do it with cannons, you can do it, uh, but you basically AOE just a little more. The, the actual change in numbers is not that big. Okay, so we kill this guy. And that's really, now uh, when you kill the lower tier of Assimilators, you get the uh, Raptor spawning. If you kill the upper one, you get the um, Nagvar spawning. But they will usually just die to AoE damage, like someone will um, actually hit it with Pirate Will, and that's basically the end of it, okay? There's not too much mechanic involved to actually do these things. If, if you keep to reasonable builds, if you basically uh, use your abilities in order and target the right enemy, um, these missions are fairly easy to be honest. As you can see now, uh, we fucked up a little here, we had someone uh, left over which will now destroy our damage a little, but that's okay, it took us about two minutes, on other runs it works better, we didn't even use a GDF, so, um, and even if we had, it would only be overkill, you know? Two minutes for the RML is pretty good. If we do the 2-1-2 um, split, you can get high numbers and actually benefit from that time-wise. But on this speed, basically, we just um, have to keep up with the flying time and uh, hitting the wrong enemies. That just happens. Okay. So, this is Pure Space Elite. Um, if you run this on a uh, random queued event, you would probably uh, have to have to, uh, 
you probably have to send someone to the middle cube to take out the small ones, have to send someone to the left uh, and take those small ships spawning out, and three guys sitting on the other one, but that is just because people uh, do deal very little damage, and um, just try to get a decent build, and the mission will look quite easy, as you can see. I mean, we didn't even have uh, that good damage team-wise, we just had way more than the mission required. Okay, so that is the second of STFs. Uh, I don't think we need to go into more detail there. Um, Kittimer. Kittimer, Kittimer. Okay, this one should do the trick. Basically uh, recorded in the same series as before's uh, CSE. This is again a very old video of a uh, dual beam bank uh, ox to bat layout. That doesn't really change anything. Like if you've taken this layout or the other one, um, basically you have to turn your ship to a uh, broadsided instead of uh, using your dual beam banks. Um, I just hope for a very long time that dual beam, dual beam banks would actually be good. Uh, it turns out that they are just about as good as the um, single arrays for some reason. Um, so on this mission we get our Romulan GDF at the first cube. Uh, if you get low, you have to use your um, Brace for Impact as it gives you a good amount of uh, kinetic damage resistance. Then we cloak right under it and get taken down to 17%. Um, now this is kind of difficult because if you don't take any damage beforehand, the GDF will be always pretty bad, like 40% um, or so if you use um, Brace for Impact. If you don't use it, you will die, however, so you basically have to use it, or you have to find the perfect range um, sitting between you and the cube, so uh, the explosion will actually take you down but not kill you. Uh, if you want to check out the um, speedrun video, it's also below the stream. We just basically obliterate the small uh, things in the front, hit the cube, as we don't really get around to the other ones, we have to base it over to actually get there quickly on the isometric charge. Now jump into the last target here, taking it out. Um, so the small things are all dead ready. And then we just target fire on the nanite transformator and kill that one. Um, okay. So now we kind of run into trouble because the other side is way uh, behind us here on killing speed. Uh, so we have to wait a little to our movement increases to come back up. We use the uh, attack pattern omega, which makes us go faster, and then uh, target fire the nanite transformator. Uh, the fire will now will only target the nanite transformator and the cube, so uh, that is kind of good. Uh, we use the quantum absorption, even though you generally speaking want more to use the um, warp shadows as they uh, taunt off enemies off of you, so they don't attack you anymore. Like the quantum absorption only absorbs a certain amount, which is not that high. Uh, the uh, warp shadows actually just take all your damage and all your torpedoes, which can even one shot you even if you have used the quantum absorption um, for a fair amount of time, especially if you have other remnants with you that will also use the ability, uh, staggered basically, so uh, that the enemy will always be taunted and never really be attacking you. Uh, so as you can see here, we were quite quickly compared to the other side. Um, on Kittimer, you want to do a 3-2 uh, split, like 3 going left, 2 going right. Uh, relevant things to call out are uh, left probes, left DPS, right probes and right DPS. What that means is, um, if you look from the start of the map, left is the left gate in the middle, the right is the right gate. Um, if you go to uh, left DPS, that will be to the left of the uh, left gateway. You will not go to the right of that, um, because you have to understand that the guy taking out the probes um, basically tries to sit at the right transformer and AOEs, the spheres, uh, the probes just alongside, like he doesn't actually target fire them, but that requires you to have way more damage. Like, um, he has to do all that and still kill his thing, kill his thing. 
and as you have on the right only two players it is even more so uh, important that you actually have people on that flank that can pick up uh, or get the speed of the other team um, so right, let's say if you do right probes that will be the most difficult spot to be in you go to the right and go to the left thing because that is uh, the route the probes will go um, and then you will AOE the probes and the smaller ones around the big thing in the middle and then you um, kill the big thing in the middle and then try to converge on the gate in the middle when you hope that your right DPS, the guy going to the right gate to the right smaller thing which is on the side where the probes don't move basically um, and hope that he has killed his thing just as quickly as you have as he had to do uh, not as much damage as you have uh, that shouldn't really be a problem but you know just GDF and all that um, really uh, makes differences here that can be big enough to uh, actually be a problem okay so let's see if we have another Kittimer that we can show I don't think I have recorded any runs that have not been um, right probes for a very long time uh, we could just quickly look at the uh, HS KSE speed record which is I think a personal one by now it's 10 months old so once again uh, you know this is just for telling you basically what you have to look out for um, and I want to show you something on the final boss what I want to explain to you so if you look at the uh, starting point like uh, this one is the attack cube you come up with when you start out and this is the left gate this is uh, the left probes side because the probes move from here to the right uh, and if you sit over there you can IOE everything this one would be the uh, left DPS side because it's on the far side of the probes you don't have to bother with them uh, everyone obviously first goes to the attack cube as everything right now is unattackable um, Oh, this one is old. Single tongue, Ares, and Oxabat. Brutal. I possibly should have recorded something for this, but you know. Uh, so we just AOE it uh, with Beam Fight Will because it is a single target increase already. Uh, we don't use too many cooldowns on this. Um, we are a little afraid of actually um, using too many buffs just because we want the optional time to be minimal, and the optional time just starts when this contact dialogue comes up so as you can see here now I do uh, not use my race for impact I just decide to go with uh, low shields and take the warp comp reach not even cloaking uh, otherwise we could have a good chance to be taken out here uh, that's just something that comes with um, you know experience basically uh, but as I said uh, brace for impact cloak right under is cloak right under it is usually a good way to go uh, so we kill everything we can see as you can see I'm at the um, left probes side because the probes move our direction to get to the uh, thing in the middle on the far side we have the right DPS um, we target the small generators first um, AOE the cube a little don't really care about that too much target the nano transformator also uh, AOE in the cube up top a little we don't once more care too much about the uh, cube but it should actually die with all the AOE damage going on there it dies and once this uh, thing is dead uh, the other side also has been killed before the cube but that is okay we don't really need the cube to be dead before the gateway is so we then move to the middle just AOE everything we have in range uh, the other side already is finished so we have the optional timer taken down a little gateway at 30% just use all our buffs okay and that's it like 13 39 or so um, okay so now comes the end boss of this instance and he has one ability like one that is mentionable he cloaks if you get closer than five kilometers and you are the target of him which makes people move in closer than 5k and then pull aggro because cannons do more damage if you're closer 
um, and then they say, oh, that wasn't intentional. Uh, just make it easy. Just don't even go in there. Don't go closer than 5k. Uh, that way he will never cloak. And if everyone does it, he dies without, uh, you know, ever cloaking and it takes only 10 seconds. This cloaking phase just steals your time. There's really not much to be learned here. Okay. So that is all that you really need to uh, know about Kittimer. Um Make sure to call out the probe sites because if the probes get through, you lose your optional. Um, then make sure you have enough damage to actually take them all out. Uh, otherwise, it might get ugly. Okay. So I will take a short break and I'll be back in just a few minutes. <laughs> 